You know, this is all about really learning how to open to to be happy, to love yourself, to love other people, to truly get over all of the you know conflicts that exist inside us so that we can truly become children of God, living here with hearts open, compassion. Now this is you know not an easy thing to even comprehend because it takes time and it as I've said many times, it takes not understanding this, but allowing these things to become living experience. There's a different kind of understanding in spiritual practice, not one of the rational mind and you know things of the earth, the material world, and et cetera, that we rationally figure out. It's an understanding that comes through experience where you don't really understand it, but you're living it. And living it allows you to have a whole totally different view of the way life is. I mean, we are trained from very early age, really early age, to mentally understand. We have to understand everything. It's like some passion inside human beings to comprehend. The world is too big to comprehend everything. And a spiritual life is an, it's an endless resource for experience. Because the only way you can get it, and the only way that it makes any kind of sense is when it becomes a living reality. To be, literally to be. And I think our work is about that, to transform the conception we have of the world. You know, we can't put a spiritual life in a little cubicle and expect it to amount to anything, but we can surrender to it. We can let go. We can allow it to become a living force inside us that guides our life. I mean, that to me is an extraordinary way of living. And you know, there are many professions in this world and arts in this world where people are taught this. You know, they're told this over and over again. I mean, this work we do is about building a system that enables us to do it, not just as an artist or a musician or an actor, but as a human being living in life, interacting with life in an experiential way. And really developing in ourselves a different way of understanding the world, not through some mental, you know, logistical plotting out of life, but through experience. Day to day living experience of life in the moment. That will change everybody and it turns people from kind of intellectual beasts into children of God. <laughs> it really transforms people into a whole other way of living. There's no more fear. There's no more insecurity. It all goes away. As life itself becomes the teacher and every moment of our life, we experience the living reality of God, spirit, higher energy, whatever one wants to call it. Does anyone have a question they would like to ask? I don't know if this is clear or it's not clear, but it really doesn't matter because this is something that you simply grow into. It's not something that I can put on a blackboard and say, here's your goal. <laughs> you just, one day it happens. You have grown, your chemistry has gone deep enough inside and the chakra system is highly developed and it just happens.
Does anyone have a question? It's just my job to share this with you all. That's all, you know? It happened to me. I let go of everything. And all of a sudden, I was full of <laughs> most incredible knowledge and wisdom that I ever imagined. And it just comes. It, you know, it's not something that I plan out and plot. It's a higher force of energy that enables one to communicate in a different way with the world. I mean, children have it. You know, infants, babies that are just born, they have that. And then life takes it away from them. They grow up being trained to be something that maybe they're not supposed to be. And all they really want is love. Love. Does anyone else or does anyone have a question they would like to ask? Uh, Stuart, yes, uh, do you remember the the first moment you you rediscovered this way of being when you started to 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 have the first glimpse of it? You know, I I can't say exactly when it, it just one day it happened, yeah. and I I I. Just started seeing the world that I started seeing people differently. Instead of people being antagonistic and an enemy and this and that, and what can I learn from them? My whole chemistry changed, but I don't know. I can't exactly pinpoint when this happened. It just became a different way of living. It put more joy in my heart, more laughter. You know, just the ability not to take life so seriously and just allow that experience, you know, to be part of my life. But I don't remember the exact moment this happened. Mm -hmm. All I know is that at some point I was just living this way. And not completely. I'm still, you know, have a lot of work to do on myself and a lot of growth to do on myself. But enough to, to for me to realize what is possible if I continue to change and grow inside myself. And in all humility, I cannot exactly, I mean, you know, it began with my teacher Rudy. When I used to hear him talk about these kinds of things and his presence and the way he lived and what I learned from him when it became a reality was really after he passed on, you know, and I had to finally come to terms with my connection with spirit and what I truly wanted to do with my life and open deep enough to allow it to happen. But when it happened, God knows, I don't know if it was in New York, if it was in Woodstock, or who knows, I don't know. But one day I was living that way. And I said, holy crap, this is a nice way to live. <laughs> and I really started enjoying it. So I enjoy it more in. than I, huh? It kind of sneaked in, back in. Yeah, it snuck in. Yeah. I said, okay, you've been doing this long enough. You might as well get some of the rewards. <laughs> <laughs> you know mm -hmm. and it really gives you an independence and a freedom that people don't ordinarily have because you know all of the stuff that we are that is shoved down our throats from the moment we're born on the way we're supposed to live it all just goes and it doesn't matter. One just truly opens and lets that spirit guide them. And when it happened, look, I don't know. I don't know exactly. That's okay. Uh, I just wanted to hear you uh, 
speak some more about it. Um, you were searching for something before. Eh? You were searching for a spiritual life, uh, looking for something. Eh? Uh, I was searching was it, was, from the was day it, I was born. <laughs> I was searching from the day I was born. And the search really began when I was 16 years old. Mm -hmm. It really became, no, I'm not going to spend the rest of my life living this way. I need another level of life, a different way to understand the world. You know, I'll tell you when it really started, when it really hit home. When my father was dying in the hospital, I was 16 years old. And I went to see him, and for an entire week, he was in a coma. He was shaking in bed. He didn't recognize anybody. And, and I walked into his hospital room, and he's lying there in a state of complete inner peace, calm. And his eyes were open, and I could, I mean, you know, I, I mean, I could look a million miles in his eyes. The whole room was just full of light. And I sat down, I took his hand, and I said, do you know me? And he shook his head and he said, yes. And I got up about 20 minutes later to go and I, you know, to leave the room for a few minutes. And I met his nurse in the hallway. And I asked her, I've told this story a lot, but it's so extraordinary. You know? I asked her, what is going on with my father? I've never seen him in such a state of deep inner peace. And she said something to me that literally almost changed my life. She said to her experience working with people in you know, these kinds of situations, she said, just before people leave the world, they go into a profound state of inner peace and they go. And my first thought was, why did my father have to wait 49 years to get this state of inner peace 15 minutes before he was going, before he died. Changed my life. Literally changed my life. And I said, Stuart, you are not strong enough to do this for yourself. You've got to find somebody in the world. And there is somebody in the world you will find who can teach you how to do this. And I went all over the world. I went to Africa, Europe. I was Constantly on my way to India, I was a young kid, 20 years old, going all over the world, looking for this, making up my own mantras and my own meditations and anything to get that sense of inner peace. Nothing worked. Until one day, by accident, which wasn't really an accident, you know, I walked into Rudy's gallery. And again, somebody said something to me. We're looking, I had walked past this gallery a thousand times. A friend of mine even told me about Rudy and what Rudy's teachings, and Rudy wouldn't take this friend as a student because the friend wouldn't give up drugs. And this was a very good friend of mine, you know, and he went first, he died on one of his drug sessions, you know, and he was a very close friend of mine. And I walked past and we, this friend of mine, we were going out to have dinner in Greenwich Village and walked past the gallery, we're looking in the window. And this friend said, well, why don't we go in? I said, Charlie, you know, I'm broke. I have no money. What am I, this stuff costs a fortune. What am I gonna do in there? So he said, no, it doesn't hurt to look. Most extraordinary thing beside that nurse that anyone ever said to me, doesn't cost to look. So I went in that gallery and standing in the middle of the gallery was Rudy. And like a magnet, I was drawn to him. And he showed me pictures of himself and his guru in India lying on the floor in some state of samadhi or whatever, with a picture of Nichananda in his heart. And he said to me, if you want to come study with me, come back tomorrow night at five o'clock, tomorrow evening at five o'clock, and I'll show you the exercise, and we'll go to the meditation class. When I left his store, something changed in me. And I said to this friend of mine, I don't know what happened there, but I gotta go see this person again. 
you know, and it shows you how God guides you because we, I, we, we were living in a tenement apartment with a bathtub in the kitchen and a toilet in the hall, you know, in a, a tenement section of Manhattan when that area was really just basically a slum. And we were living there. This friend of mine had an apartment there and I was staying with him and I had no money. You know, I had just gotten back from Europe, uh, you know, a whole story, you know. And I never forget, we're walking up this after dinner. We got went back to his apartment. We're walking up the stairwell. And this guy standing there, who I knew, because I would see him in the hallway and say hello to him, but I never, I didn't know anything about him. He said, would you like to come into my apartment for a cup of tea? And we said, yes. So we walked into this, I'm talking a railroad flat with a bathtub in the kitchen, toilet in the hall, and the guy has a half a million dollar Oriental art collection in this apartment. I mean, Buddhas and Tonkas, and, I mean, unbelievable. I went, I said, where'd you get this stuff? Guy, there's a guy in Greenwich Village named Rudy, who I had just met an hour before. When a student is ready, the teacher will be there. And God will direct you right into the lap of that teacher. When I left that man's apartment, I said to my friend, Charlie, I got to go see that person again. I said to him, you know, and it brings tears to my eyes. I said, something extraordinary happened today. I don't know what it is, but I have to go see that person again. And the next day I went down and from the time he showed me the meditation, it was like a, I mean, it was such an incredible relationship, so profound and so deep and so life-changing. And as they say, when the student is ready, the teacher will be there. God will take you to, and it's what you do with it. <laughs> it's what people do with it. You know, I can only talk from my own experience. That's exactly what happened to me. And I was at a point, I had a friend of mine in, who lived in San Francisco, and he was all involved with the uh, art and, you know, poetry movement in San Francisco, you know, with, uh, you know, the Open City, whatever it is, the, the whole beatnik thing he was involved with, their hippie thing and poets. And he told me, if you come out to San Francisco, I'll introduce you to Ginsburg and this one and that one, and they're going to love your poetry. And you're going to get very successful. I was ready to leave to California, to San Francisco. And that's the day I met Rudy. And then I had to write this friend of mine a letter telling him I can't go. I met somebody today who literally, I just got to find out what it's all about. Changed my life. But it was also something, I said, where am I going to find a person like this who's willing to do this for me? And boy, I mean, it was a rough and tumble time. It wasn't easy, only because he was showing me every day that I was around him and with him and every how what I had to work on in myself. And it wasn't easy. I had a lot of things that I need to get, had to get clear up inside myself. So they say, when the student is ready, the teacher, it's really true. It's so profound and so true. Because I can only say from my own life, it's how I met Rudy. I'd walk past his gallery a thousand times. He used to live a 15 minute walk away. He had a gallery, 15 minute walk away from where I lived in Manhattan. And I used to go to the village a lot. I had a lot of friends there. And and I always walked past that gallery and I'd always look in the window and I never went in. And then one day, doesn't cost to look. It was one of the most profound things ever said to me in my life. <laughs> it doesn't cost to look. It saved my life. So anyway, I'm just sharing this with all of you 
you know, people sometimes think I was born in some lotus flower in the Himalaya, you know, I'm not. I came from the streets of the South Bronx, for God's sake, you know. But there was always a thing in me that needed a spiritual life I, from the earliest ages. I could only, I wanted something. I didn't, I knew there was something more important that I had to attain in this life that was being offered to me at high school and junior high school and college and all these places I went to get an education. Does anyone else have a question? And he told me, Rudy, once, he said to me, that was many times, he said, you'll never need another teacher. But he told me, he said, I will give you everything I've ever learned. And he has. And every day, more of it comes. He told me that you'll never need another teacher. Everything I've ever learned in my life will be given to you. That's why I never went. Yeah, I looked, I went, I did. In India, I would go to Swamis and Rinpoche's and all kinds. Of, but then I stopped. I said, you know, there's only one I met who was really extraordinary. And I said, no, it's enough. I, I remember going to uh, Ramana Maharshi's ashram in South India in Tiruvannamalai. And I walked in the door of the place. You know, and I, I was stunned. I mean, it was like a fashion show for European people in Hindu costumes. <laughs> I couldn't believe it when I walked in. And I said, Stuart, you didn't come here for this. There's got to be another reason why you've come to this ashram. So I remember walking around the ashram and I saw a door and a fence in the back of the ashram. I opened it up and there was a path that led up this mountain. I think Mount Anurchala, I think it's called. And I walked up the path and I came to a cave. And there was a sign there, Ramana Maharshi meditated in this guy, I think for 15 years or something like that. And I walked into the cave and I had questions because I was at a point at that time of my life where I was getting so sick and tired of ashram bullshit and people and having to be a father for so many people. And, you know, I was getting tired of it. I wanted to go live in a monastery and have a quiet life. So I sat down in this cave and suddenly the whole cave just became full of light. And Ramana Maharshi was sitting in front of me and he yelled at me. He said, your life is in the world. Your life is not in an ashram. Your life is not in a cave. Your temple is the world. Go back to the world and stop looking for something that is never going to be part of your karma. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, man, when I got up from that place, it again changed my life. I was, <laughs> and instead of being upset about the Hindu fashion show, I kind of enjoyed it. You know, I said, oh, well, the hell, people live the way they want to live. And it's not my problem. You know? <laughs> Anyone When you're ready to get teachings, they come. You have to be open and ready to listen and then find a place in yourself where you can apply them to your life. Does anyone else have a question you would like to ask? Okay, well, God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you for being my teacher being in these classes and drawing all this stuff out of me that changes me. God bless you. Thank you. And there'll be a class on Sunday and I'm looking forward to seeing you. Thank you very much, Stuart. Thank you. Bye. Bye.